Hi everyone, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about chapter 10, interfaces and polymorphism. So in this lecture, I will talk about how to declare and use interfaces and how they can help us to decouple classes and provide a better design for our classes. Throughout this lecture, we will see that interface types are used to express uh, common operations between classes and they make it possible to make a service available to a wide set. So let's assume that uh, we want to write a method to compute the average of an array of objects, but each object may be an object of uh, a different uh, class, but obviously all the objects are uh, instances of uh, object class, because object class is the uh, super class of all classes. So when you want to calculate the average of an array of objects, uh, we know that for calculating average, we have the same algorithm. You have to uh, measure each object and then add all the object, add all the measurements together. And then at the end, you have to divide the summation by the number of objects. So that's the algorithm for computing the average. So this is the same for all cases. However, the details of measurements for each object may be different. For example, if you have a bank account, the get measure method should return the balance. However, if you have an, when you have a country as an object, then the get measure should return the area of that uh, country. So uh, the solution for having an average method that can compute the average of a variety of objects is that all objects who want to use this average service, they should all agree on a get measure method with the same signature. And then after they all agreed on the same signature for get measure, then you can write a code like this one and simply say, uh, sum is equal to sum plus object dot get measure. So you just write, you just call get measure for all the objects, but depending on the type of the object, a different implementation of the get measure will be called. So if you don't understand it right now, don't worry, we're gonna talk about it for the rest of this lecture. Now let's talk about how to define an interface type. The problem is we need to declare a type for object, but we need to invent a new type that describes any class whose objects can be measured. So an interface type is used to specify these required operations like get measure or any other method that we want to implement for a group of objects. So here is how we define an interface. Simply you write public interface measurable and then inside braces you write double get measure similar to a class the way that you define uh, a method in the class but you don't need to implement it anymore because that's an interface. Every uh, class that wants to you know, implement this interface has to implement all the methods defined in the interface. So a Java interface type declares methods but doesn't provide their implementations because all the classes who want to uh, implement the interface, uh, they have to implement their methods. So the, the, the get measure, the definition in interface has no implementation. Every class who wants to use it has to provide its own implementation. Here you can see details about how to uh, declare an interface. That's the syntax that is acceptable for the Java compiler. 
An interface type is similar to a class, but it has some differences. An interface type does not have instance variables. All methods in an interface type are abstract, which means that they have a name parameter and a return type, but no implementation. All methods in an interface type are automatically public and all and you know an interface type has no constructor which means that you cannot construct objects of an interface type so let's go back to the example that we mentioned at the beginning of the lecture the measurable uh, interface let's assume that you want to write a method for calculating the average the average should get an array of measurable objects. So the type of objects would be measurable. Measurable is what? Measurable is the interface that we defined before. It's a interface that has a method called get measure. When you have an array of measurables as your explicit parameter, then you can uh, do the following inside the method. You first create a double sum equal to zero. This is the variable that will eventually calculate the summation of all the measurements. And in a for loop, for every object inside the array of objects, you simply say sum is equal to sum plus object dot get measure. So when this get measure method is called in this line, every object depending on the implementation of its class calls its own get measure method implementation and the specific implementation of get measure will be executed for every single object depending on the type of that object depending on the class that the object is instantiated from and then in an, if else, uh, in an if a statement, we check whether the length of the array is non-zero. And if it's non-zero, you simply return uh, sum divided by the length of the array, length of objects. Otherwise, if the length is zero, which means there's no object, so the average would be zero. It, then it returns zero. Now that we have seen how to abuse a measurable interface let's see how a class can simply implement that uh, interface so the measurable interface that we saw before which had the get measure method can be implemented by a class like bank account in the following manner you simply write public class account the bank account the same way that you define a class before but before writing the body of the class in the same line that you write the name of the class and the signature of the class you write implements keyword that's a keyword and the name of the interface that you're going to implement so it implements measurable and inside braces you need to define the implementation for get measure but with the same signature that it is specified in the measurable interface. In the measurable interface, if you remember, it had no explicit parameters and the type of output was double. That's why we write public, double, get measure, and inside braces you define what the uh, what kind of uh, operations the method uh, get measure has to execute you simply return balance because we assume that the measurement of a bank account is its balance so bank account objects are instances of the measurable type which means that if you have an object of bank account it is automatically a measurable why because bank account implements measurable so you can instantiate a new bank account like this. You, saw, you simply write new bank account and you write measurable object, measurable OBJ 
is equal to new bank account. This is completely okay because bank account is immeasurable. In fact, it's similar to casting a subclass to a superclass. If you remember in the previous chapter, we said you can uh, do this. For example, a bank account is an object. Here we can say a bank account is a measurable because it implements the measurable interface. So in this slide, you can see another class like country that again implements the same measurable interface, uh, very similar to what we had for bank account class, same syntax, but in the implementation of the public uh, double get measure method, we return area this time because the country doesn't have a balance and you know the measurement of a country uh, should be the area of that country so we use interface types to make code more reusable in fact the average method that we defined a few slides back uh, can be applied on the objects of both country and uh, you know the bank account which means that you don't need to define multiple average uh, implementations. One implementation can work, on, can work on different objects. That's why we can say that interface types make code more reusable. So in order to decouple the classes bank account and country from the data class, which may include, for example, the average method, you can implement uh, interface me measurable uh, on, in both bank account class and country class and instead the data can use the measurable interface instead of using bank account or country directly this way you're decoupling data from bank account and country. And here you can see the syntax of implementing an interface in a more formal way. As you see, the words uh, implement, uh, the word implements is a keyword that you can add after the name of a class in the first line. And then, you know, this way you show that a class implements a specific um, interface, in this case, measurable. And then if you do this, you need to provide the implementation for all methods declared in that interface. In this case, measurable had only one method, which was get measure. And as you see, the get measure is uh, implemented in the class bank account, which implements measurable. Here are some differences between an interface and the concept of inheritance and superclass. Uh, let's assume that we have another interface called name, which uh, has a method called get name. So if some class wants to implement this interface, it has to provide an implementation for the method string get name. So the first difference between interface and superclasses is that a class can implement more than one interface. For example, the country class can implement both measurable and name. All you need to do is separate them with a comma in the first line of defining that class. But class can only extend or inherit from one single superclass. So that's the first difference an interface specifies the behavior that an implementing class should supply but a super class provides some implementation that a subclass inherits so interface only specify the behavior but super class provides some implementation too so you need to remember that we develop interfaces when we want to have the same code uh, to process objects with different classes. 
in a common way. Always remember the average method as an example. So let's see another uh, method that uses the measurable interface. Let's assume that we are defining larger method that gets two measurables as its uh, input explicit parameters and returns a measurable that returns the measurable that is larger. So if one of uh, if, if for example if the first uh, explicit parameter is larger than the second one, then it returns the first one. Otherwise, it returns the second one. What's the implementation? You need an if a statement, if else a statement. If the first object, the first measurable ob the object that get measured is greater than the second objects that get measured, then they return the first object, otherwise return the second one. So it returns the object with a larger measure. Uh, and you know, this is how you can call this method, you can have a new country called Uruguay with a specific uh, area and another country like Thailand with another uh, specific area. And then you can call larger method in the following way. You can say larger of Uruguay and Thailand uh, has to be assigned to the measurable max. So max would contain a reference to the country that is larger. In this case, I think, yeah, in this case, Thailand has a larger uh, area. Therefore, max would refer to the country Thailand. So in the previous slide, max refers to Thailand, which is the, the, an object of country class, but the compiler in the compile time means before running and executing the code doesn't know whether the measurable refers to a country or a, for example bank account or any other class that implements measurable so when you want to cast from interface to a class when you are when you want to cast for example a measurable to a country uh, type you need to explicitly cast it so that the compiler believes that uh, this is what you want because the uh, compiler doesn't know the dynamic types. All the compiler knows is the static types because the compiler acts before execution. So here you can simply say max should be cast into a country before you set it equal to country max country. So the country max country is a variable of type country with a static type country, but max is a measurable. But when you are casting it into a country, you should be able to do it and the compiler doesn't uh, raise an error and doesn't say that you are uh, assigning a different type to another type. This way the compiler lets you do it. And then after you set country max country to a, to the max, which was the output of larger method, you can get the name of that country by calling the get name. The get name is implemented in the country class. Therefore, this way you can get the name of the country. And for example, in this case, the name would be Thailand. So you need a cast to convert from an interface type to a class type. If you are wrong and max does not refer to a country object, then the program throws an exception at runtime. Why? Because the compiler uh, believes you and say, uh, the compiler says, okay, if you think that max refers to a country, I believe you and I let you run the program. But if you are wrong, then the program throws an exception at runtime. Another example of interfaces is a comparable interface in the standard Java library. Comparable interface has a single method that you can see here. The method is called compare to. It gets an object called other object and it returns an integer. So the type of 
input parameter is object, the type of output param the type of output uh, is an integer. So this is how you call compare to for an object of a class, for example. Uh, a dot compare to B. This way you're comparing object A to object B. The compare to method returns a negative number if A should come before B, which means A is less than B. It is zero if A and B are the same or have the same value. And it's, it returns a positive number if B should come before A or A is greater than B. So you implement comparable interface so that the objects of your class can be compared uh, in a, for example, sort method. So if you have a bunch of comparable objects, you can sort them based on this compared to method. Here is an example of uh, implementing comparable. For example, let's assume that we want to implement comparable in a bank account class. So basically at the beginning we have to write, you know, bank account implements comparable. And then you need to provide an implementation for compare to method. So the compare to method, again, as I said, has an has an, ex has an explicit parameter called other object with type object. So if you want to use that other object, you need to first explicitly cast it into a bank account. As you see here, see this is an explicit casting of other object to a bank account. And because, you know, other object has type object and object is the super class of all classes including bank accounts so it can be casted into a bank account after casting it then the other object is in the variable type uh, the, in a variable of name other with type bank account so you can simply say other dot balance which returns the balance of the other bank account and then compare the other ba balance with balance, which means the balance of the current bank account. If the balance is less than other dot balance, then you need to return negative one. As I said, you need to return a negative integer if the current class, if the object of the current class is less than the object other. And you need to return one if the balance is greater than other dot balance. Otherwise, if it's not is neither less nor greater, you have to return zero because they should be equal. They should have equal balances. So remember, compare to method has a parameter of reference type object. If you want to get a reference to a specific class like bank account, you have to explicitly uh, cast the other object into the specific class, in this case, bank account. After implementing comparable interface in the bank account, you can sort a number of bank accounts in an array. So in this case, look at the first line of code. We are basically creating an array of accounts. Uh, which has three different bank accounts. We in, instantiate three objects of bank account and put it in the object uh, in the array accounts. And then we construct each one of them, account zero, account one, account two, in the three following lines of codes. And we set the first bank account balance into 10,000, second one into zero, third one into 2,000. And at the end, we call the sort method on accounts array. This way, they will be sorted uh, increasingly. Uh, for example, the bank account with 
you know, balance zero would be the first one, then the balance with 2000 would be the second bank account, and the balance 10,000 would be the last uh, bank account in the array of accounts. So uh, the sort method of arrays class uh, basically sort the comparable objects in an increasing way. In Java, you can define a method, you can define a class inside the method. This class is called a trivial class. So this class is treated like other classes, but it is only visible to the block of the containing method. Also, we can have an inner class, which is a class that is declared inside another class, but outside the methods of that class. So you can declare in a class inside an enclosing class, but outside its methods. It is available to all methods of enclosing class, and the compiler turns, turns the inner class into a regular class file, but with a strange name that you don't need to know that name. The inner classes are commonly used for utility classes that should not be visible elsewhere in the program. So, for example, in this class, you have uh, the class name uh, measure, measure, measure Tester has a class in it called Area Measurer that, for example, implement Measurer, and it has some other methods like main or other methods, any other methods it can have. So in the main method, you can use the uh, class area measure and you know uh, use the methods that are defined and implemented inside this class, but it's not visible outside of the enclosing class measure and test. A very interesting uh, application of interfaces in Java is when you want to test the class before the entire program has been completed. A mock object provides the same services as another object, but in a similar, simplified manner. So, uh, as an example, you can think of it as when you want to practice arranging the Christmas decoration then you don't need a real tree. Similarly, when you develop a computer program, you can use mock objects to test parts of your program. So in the next slide, I'm gonna explain this more. So let's see a real world example. Let's assume that you want to have a grade book application with a grading program class, the main class, that manages squeeze scores using a class called gradebook which provides the following methods. For example, it has an add a score method, it has a get average score method, it has the save method, which saves the uh, grades in a file. And then you wanna test the grading program without having a fully functional gradebook. Let's assume that someone else is working on gradebook and he hasn't done it yet completely or there's some problem in it, but you still want to be able to test your grading program class, the main class. So you declare an interface type with the same methods that you expect from gradebook class. The interface as a convention use the letter I as a prefix for the, uh, as a prefix of uh, that name. So for example, since you wanna create an interface for gradebook, you write, public interface i gradebook right so you know that this is an interface for gradebook and inside that interface you simply declare the methods that you expect from gradebook now both the mock class and the actual class implement the same interface i gradebook the grading program class should only use the interface i gradebook not the actual gradebook class which implements the interface. Meanwhile, you provide a simplified mock implementation of uh, you know, the methods 
inside the mock gradebook class and you know the, the the mock implementation only restrict is only restricted to the case of one student without saving functionality so here is how mock gradebook is implement is implemented you write public class mock gradebook which implements iGradebook and it has for example the private score array list and inside the mock gradebook uh, uh, constructor you write a score is equal to new array list double and in, inside the add score you ignore the student id and you simply uh, write something that uh, works for only one student and you return something and you don't return anything for example and then you know in public uh, get average score you simply set double uh, total equal to zero and you simply add the total by uh, only the scores of uh, one student and then at the end you return total divided by scores that size so a very very simple implementation for only one student and then in the save you do nothing it doesn't need to have the saving functionality all you want to have is a, a mock gradebook with a very simplified functionality that can allow you to implement and test a grading program. So in the next step, you can simply construct an instance of mock gradebook class and use it immediately to test grading program class. When you are ready to test the actual class, you simply use a gradebook instance instead. You don't erase the mock class, it will still come in handy for regression testing later.